All right, can you guys hear me at the back? All right, fantastic. Good afternoon, everyone. And it's always special to meet an audience after a sumptuous lunch. So if I see you yawning or stretching, I'm just going to blame it on the food. All right, let's get this started. My name is Gokul Bajaj. I'm the director for sales at Cvent. Today, I'm going to be talking about how you can activate events data to drive revenue. Now, I think the reason all of us are here in the room today is because we have an appreciation for events. And we value the power of human connection because it's magical when we all come together on personal or on professional fronts. Let me put this in perspective and in the language that we all understand, which is business. Across the globe, one trillion dollars is spent on meetings and events. For any organization, between one and three percent of their revenue is spent on meetings and events. Now, let's take an instance, a pharmaceutical company that's doing about $43 billion. So the kind of money they'll be spending on meetings and events is $850 million. That's a whole lot of money we're talking about here. So what's on our mind, right? We know that 24% of a marketing budget is spent on meetings and events. So that's a huge amount. Meetings and events take away a lot of money. And 74% of the marketeers agree that event is the number one demand generation tactic. Now, let's size up the event opportunity here, because there are different kinds of events that we all participate and organize. So first, it's the events that you organize. So it could be a luncheon seminar, a webinar, or a user conference. Now, that's the event that you are organizing as an organizer. Or it could be an event that you exhibit at, like how we are exhibiting at this event today, right? So across all these events and across all the different demand generation tactics that you get, events contribute to 20 to 30% of all MQLs. It is a significant contribution. And that's why they are the number one demand generation tactic. It just doesn't stop there. Events are super crucial to a buyer's life cycle from the time they're made aware of your product to the time they actually purchase it. So I'm going to give you like five seconds to go through this. So all these points are touch points maybe that are being fostered digitally, right? So somebody is bouncing on your website, downloading a white paper, speaking with a salesperson. But guess what? There's a way to accelerate this, and that's through meetings and events. So not only are you shortening your sales cycle through meetings and events, but you're also finding opportunities to upsell and cross-sell into your existing base. With that said, you know, with the expectation set around events and how crucial they are, it is a bit ironical given the state of affairs. As marketeers, we spend hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars in capturing the footprint of a visitor who's spending probably 30 seconds to a few minutes on our website and we don't do a great job in capturing the footprint of an attendee that's in captive audience listening to us for maybe three hours to a couple of days. Right? Let's, let me just you know, give you some more color around it. So let's say you do a Google ad. And of course, we spend a whole lot of dollars. In fact, we as an organization do as well. But you don't get a lot of information. Perhaps an IP address, location. When you do email marketing, you get a few more details. First name, last name, email address. Maybe they sign up for a newsletter. But when you do an event, there's a wealth of data that can be collected. Everything from somebody's meal preferences to session preferences to what sessions they opted for, how much time they spent, how much time they spent with an exhibitor, what kind of conversations they have, it's all gold. So as event marketeers and planners, what's on our mind today? Is number one, how do we maximize the impact of events? And second, how do we drive the ROI? But of course, you know, like for everything else in life, there is a challenge. And the challenge is events are not standardized. In fact, the processes that we follow around events are not standardized. I'm sure there's a bunch of planners and marketers in the room. Think about what your organization does. You plan and organize multiple events. You visit multiple events. You have technology for some events. You don't have technology for some events. Or maybe you're using vendors, and you're trying to stitch it all together. What that leads to is inconsistencies and data leakages. And the impact is humongous. The impact is directly on the top line. Let me show you how that works. So what we've observed and uh, ran through a survey is 
of the leads from a trade show go unfulfilled. And you know why? It's because there were inconsistencies in the process. Probably some, uh, some, somebody scribbled something at the back of a business card, or there was a paper, etc. So that's why 40% of the leads go unfulfilled. 55% of the leads aren't even followed up in the first five days of a trade show. And that's when the iron is hot. That's when you want to reach out to your prospect and convert a deal, and it doesn't get followed up on. 72% of the companies don't even know how to calculate an ROI. For them, events are just anecdotal. The feedback from events is just anecdotal. They don't even know how to justify ROI from the events that they end up organizing. So look at the impact on the funnel. So because of all these inconsistencies, the top of the funnel shrinks, so does the bottom of the funnel. And that impacts your top line. So what's the solution? We've been talking about challenges. We've been sizing up the event industry. What's the solution? The solution is data. Not just data alone, but the right way to define it, capture it, and activate it. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's start with defining data. You want to first define what you want to collect. It could be firmographic. It could be demographic, and it could be behavioral. Now, what I mean by that is demographic would be like my name, my title, address, et cetera. Firmographic, my organization, revenue size, what industry I belong to, and behavioral, what kind of sessions am I interested in? Who do I want to meet at the event? What products am I particularly interested in? And I'll show you how this data translates to ROI. So that's about defining data. Now let's talk about capturing this data. Now, data capturing happens throughout the entire event lifecycle, starting from the pre-event phase. When you build a website, a nice-looking landing page, that is an extension of your organization so that you can maximize your outreach. Probably place third-party widgets, create a dedicated website, generate more traffic, generate more interest, more eyeballs, and eventually more leads. And of course, personalized marketing. How many times do you respond to an email that says, hi, member? versus an email that's in my name from a person that I recognize, my chances of opening that email, responding to it, and taking action on that email are much higher. So that definitely helps. And of course, multi-path registration. We don't want our attendees to see a one-size-fits-all registration form. We want it to be customized to their needs. If I am an exhibitor, I want to be asked questions that are relevant to me. If I'm a sponsor, questions relevant to me, or if I'm a media personnel, I want to see a form that's relevant to me. So you should do that as well. Now, during the event, you want to tap um, the footprint of your attendee right from the time you check in. So you guys experienced this today as well. When you walked in, you were handed a badge over. So now we have an impression of you. We exactly know what time you came in, right? You could take that ahead and calculate the attendance of your attendees at each session. Maybe you want to award certificates. Maybe um, it's a scientific program, and there are credits that needs to be awarded. So you could look at how much time each attendee is spending in each session. And then, of course, you want to also get impressions on how much time they're spending on the mobile app. Which sponsors are they clicking on? Which surveys did they take? How did they rate the speakers? What did they feel about the event overall? Did they engage with fellow attendees? Speaking of which, have the ability for your attendees to network with each other. Why? Because attendees come to events for two reasons, network and to educate themselves. For your exhibitors at the event, because I think some, we have some exhibitors in the room today, and all of you are using this app anyway. For your exhibitors, you should have an app where they can capture the footprint of the attendee, right? Capture the details of the attendee, probably take some notes around it, so that this data can be actioned upon once they go back home or to their offices. And post-event, you obviously want to run a survey. Instead of using anecdotes to determine how successful the event was, might as well get it from your attendees when it's fresh in their heads. <clears throat> so what we've done is we've captured the footprint of attendee for every little action that they take centered around the event. It could be before, during, and after. And what that does it creates a sort of an engagement score for your attendee. And why is that important? Because I think all of us have been guilty of going to events, sorry. All of us have been guilty to going to events, moving around some sessions, having food, and come back home. Now, that is a ghost attendee. But what you are doing here is you're capturing the footprint of attendee at every point. You're sitting on a wealth of data. You exactly know that, let's say, John Smith responded to a certain email 
Then he came to the event. He went to session one, spent 25 minutes. Session two, spent 15 minutes and had a conversation with an exhibitor and he's interested in the product to buy in the next three months. Now, having that information versus having no information at all, it's night and day. So once you've collected all this data, what do you do with it? Now, this is the time you start actioning that data because if you're just sitting on that data, it's like looking at an Excel sheet with rows and columns and not knowing what to do with it. But now we have the answer. So you've collected a whole lot of details. If you remember my slide, I spoke about firmographic, demographic, behavioral. You've collected all this data. So what could you do with this? So going back to my engagement score, let's say I had an audience of 500 people in the room. And of the 500 people, there were 100 people who weren't so engaged because they didn't check into as many sessions, they didn't have as many conversations, they didn't speak to a lot of sales guys on the floor, so their engagement score was fairly low. Maybe they're not ripe for me to follow up on from a sales perspective. So what I would do is, I'd probably push all this data into automated email campaigns through my marketing tech stack. These guys could be a part of a nurture campaign, and they could get a series of drip emails till the time they become warm enough for me to follow up on again. But those guys who were like a 400 on a 500 engagement score, heavily engaged, had those conversations, sent 45 minutes in each session, those are the people that I want to run after or I want my sales team to chase. So guess what? I'm going to integrate that data into my CRM system, and by the time my team gets back to the office, there's a task waiting for them to follow up on. Or if you're in an association management system or an association, you could just integrate this data into your AMS and start making sense of your member and your non-member behavior. So what's the impact of doing all this that I've just been speaking about? The impact is huge. The impact is for you to earn yourself a seat in the boardroom. Because why? Every dollar that you spend around your events can now be reported on. Against every dollar that you spend on your events, you can look at how much pipeline was created and how much business was actually closed. And it's not just about business. It could apply to any sort of industry that you're in. If you're a university, it could mean more enrollments. If you're an association, it could mean more members. Or if you're a corporation, it could just mean more leads and more business closed. So let's take this one for example. I know there's a lot of numbers here. So if you could just play along. Let me see if this is the pointer. Yeah, this is. All right. <clears throat> So let's say there's an organization that's collecting around 10,000 MQLs across their uh, events program. So from their trade shows and the events that they organize. 10,000 MQLs, of those, 25% convert to SQLs, which is sales qualified leads. Of those, 30% convert into opportunities. And for every one in two opportunity, they have a closure. Which means, you don't have to go through the math over here, which means from 10,000 leads collected, they close 375 deals with an average selling price of 25K, 9.3 million is generated. But with the intervention of technology, with your processes being streamlined, typically, industry-wide, you can see a bump of 20% increase in leads, and I'm just taking a very, very conservative 1% in stage conversion. Why? Because all your data is in one place. Everything is streamlined, which means you're gonna act on that data much faster. Just look at the impact. From 10,000 leads, you go to 12,000, and with an incremental 1% lift in each stage, you get an additional $3 million. So that's huge, ladies and gentlemen. So you could use this, take it in your organization as a case study, and see how it impacts your organization overall. That actually brings me to the end of the slide, and I want to end with a quote which I firmly believe in. In God we trust, everyone else must bring data. Because without data, you're just someone with an opinion. Thank you very much. That's my time. Thank you, Gokul. You have a minute if you want to take a question. If anybody's got a question for Gokul, anyone, raise your hand real quick. We do have like a minute. Yes, there's one over here. We'll get a microphone over to you. And by the way, that is how you handle a, a handheld microphone. Good job. Yep. Nice. An extra points for the laser pointer. Hmm? I didn't know it's going to be that heavy. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> your question. Okay. Hi. Thank you. Um, so my question would be, how do you advise for events that are live, for example, on Facebook and YouTube? How can we engage those people who are tuning in in order to drive the sales as well? That, that's a great question. Um, I mean, as much as I want to 
sell my organization right now and answer that, but I'm going to steer clear from it. I think the best way to do that is to find a technology that comes packaged with broadcasting and engagement features on the side. So, you know, the limitation with what you've just mentioned is most of these technologies only allow you to broadcast. So let's say if you're doing a virtual event, people can just tune in and maybe have a chat on the side. There's nothing else that you could do about it. What you want to do here is have a broadcast technology that has some engagement built on the side. Maybe like a live poll, a Q&A, a chat, a survey option, or a community aspect to it where people can interact with each other. The other thing that I would do in such an event is I will try and create a community as opposed to just doing one event. Maybe have something that's more on an ongoing basis. So like pre-event, I can send out emailers and excite people about some collateral or some videos that they could educate themselves on and leave that open even after the event. Maybe give people the opportunity to network with me, my team, or other members, right? Because like I said, people attend events for two reasons. One is to educate and the second is to network. So you've got the education bit sorted by delivering great content, right? By packaging great content. The other piece that you need to sort is give them enough opportunities to network with fellow attendees. And with technology like ours and maybe a few other players available in the market, you could certainly do that. Yeah, are we good? Thank you so much, Gokul, yeah. All right, Thank for other so questions, for uh, you can meet me and my team outside. Thank you. Cheers.